Hello everyone, Christina here and today I want to show you how to make traditional Easter bread. Same way like during Christmas time we make Christmas bread, during Easter time we make what's called mazanets. Uh, this recipe will make two smaller ones or you can make one that's really large. Uh, I worked really hard to create this recipe uh, so I hope that you will give it a try. Uh, it took me many years of tries and errors. Uh, the recipe is pretty similar to the Christmas bread. Some people would use the same recipe, but I wanted just to try something different, a little bit different. So this is a little bit different recipe than my Christmas bread. Uh, so we will need three fourths of a cup of milk, three fourths of a cup of granulated sugar, three teaspoons of dry yeast, four cups of all-purpose flour, one-fourth of a teaspoon salt, lemon zest, one stick of butter, and here I have four eggs, but we will need only one whole egg and three egg yolks, half a cup of raisins, and then for the topping, we will brush it with egg yolk, and here I have sliced almonds, which will be on the top as a beautiful topping, very traditional. I know that it's uh, lots of ingredients, so if you are looking for the list of ingredients, you can go to my website, it's www.checkcookbook.com and link will be on the YouTube in the description, which when you click on it, it will take you straight to the recipe. And I cannot wait for you guys to see this, and uh, so let's do this together, okay? <laughs> First we will have to warm up our milk, so here is three-fourths of a cup of milk. Now let's put it to the microwave. Uh, for me it takes about 40 seconds and then it's uh, lukewarm because that's what you are looking for. You don't want it too hot. Usually with my pinky I just test it to see if it's not too hot. Um, and now we will add out of the three-fourths of cup of sugar, let's just take one teaspoon out and add it to the milk. And I will be adding 3 teaspoons of dry yeast. Now you want to mix it all. And now set up the timer for 10 minutes, which is about how much it will take until it starts to active, be active and bubble up. I want to tell you that I will be using my KitchenAid mixer uh, normally, I like to use it the traditional way, but I found out that it's better if the dough is being mixed for about 10 minutes, which it would be really hard to do by hands. Uh, so whatever you have, uh, also there is a hand mixer that has the spiral attachment, so you can use that too. But I recommend really working with this dough because it releases more gluten and it just makes it the dough more fluffy and better. But whatever you have, it's fine. I also tried it to do it in a bowl and it worked great too. So, uh, but for now I'll be using my mixer. Here I have the leftover sugar, so that's the first thing I put in, so I don't forget it. Uh, then let's do one fourth of a teaspoon salt, four cups of all-purpose flour, let's put it in. Now let's mix it so the sugar and salt can get all mixed. Now I have here zester and lemon. So let's zest the whole lemon because it gives amazing flavor to the skin. And also amazing smell. Now let's mix it again. And now I have here the stick of butter and it will need to melt it. So I'll put it uh, into a cup. And now I'll put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds, which will melt the butter. And I will bring you closer so you can see right what's going on here. The butter is melted, so let's put it in. Let's put in the whole egg. And now we will have to separate three egg yolks. And let me show you how I like to do it. This is an amazing tool that you can get on Amazon. I can put the link under the video on a website because this is pretty cool. I crack it 
and now I kind of let the egg white go in and then you put the egg yolk and now I shake it if there is any leftover egg white and now it should be good isn't it amazing so I put it in and now I will do the rest and we will have three egg yolks total our 10 minute timer is done and look at this beautiful yeast mixture see that beautiful foam so it worked really well so let's add this whole thing in if you would not see such a foam it means that your yeast is no more active and is it it's expired most likely so no wonder then if you dough if your dough does not rise so make sure you have a good yeast and now we will be mixing this and then we will be adding the raisins you will need this hook attachment so let's put it in and I will be doing on slow so let's first stir it and then I'll be adding more speed and now you can set up the timer let's say for 10 minutes because that's how long uh, we will do it so now it's all mixed in so let's raise the speed one more and this is how we will keep it for the eight remaining minutes so if you see a little bit of flour that is uh, stuck on the bowl just put it in also the bottom scrape it off so it can all mix in nicely so I'm on number three looks like it we have now five minutes left so uh, I want to turn it off and put the dough down again so it doesn't just spin around and now we can turn it back up back on after 10 minutes of mixing let's turn this off and we'll be adding half a cup of raisins I was a little short on the full half cup but that's okay or if you don't like raisins you can skip it just for a little bit so it can get all mixed in Okay, this is fine. Now we will get the dough out. I'll kind of fold it with my hands so the raisins can get mixed in. Pick the dough up and put a little bit of flour on the bottom of our bowl where it will be rising. And also on the top just sprinkle flour now let's cover it cover it up with the kitchen towel and let it rise for one and a half hour in a warm place I will put it uh, close to the fireplace so it can have the nice warmth so one and a half hour is done and it's nice uh, here I have also a baking tray with baking paper on because when we are ready we will put put it on there now let's try to cut it in half you can also make one big one but I like two smaller ones and now you will want to work with this bring your board and let's just fold it and release the air doesn't have to be long just a little bit and I'm already trying to create uh, the round ball for mazanets as you see it's looking good now I'll put it on a tray and flatten it. I like it a little lower so it doesn't have like a small ball that's super tall. 
So I just try to flatten it a little more, but not all the way flat. That's good. And now I will work with the second one. Here they are, and now you will want to cover them with your clean kitchen towel. You can use the same one you use for the bowl, and we will need to let it rise for another one and a half hour. And I will bring this tray again close to the fireplace. So one and a half hour is done, and as you see, they look beautiful. And now traditionally, you will wanna cut the cross on the top, uh, which represents uh, Jesus and dying on a cross. Uh, but some people say if you cut the cross, the steam can escape and this way it won't crack. I tried so many and some cracked with the cross, some cracked without the cross. So it's just almost like I don't know if it will crack or not. But I will try it and it's just for you so you see. I have here a ch uh, kitchen scissors. And now I will cut it, because with the knife it's hard to go through, but with the scissors I will just cut a little opening like this. Could be maybe a little bigger, but this is fine, just to test it. And let's uh, first preheat the oven to 350. Here I have uh, one egg yolk, and we will want to brush our mazanets now. Also in the cutting here, in our cross. They are nicely shiny and you want to use the whole egg yolk if possible. And now we will sprinkle a sliced almonds, which is very traditional. Some people also put sliced or cut almonds inside of the dough. But for now I just will do the top. My bag with almonds fell, so the almonds a little bit broke, so that's why you see little pieces. Uh, and as soon as our oven is preheated to 350, you want to bake it for half an hour. But if you make one large Easter bread, then you want to add 10 minutes. But I will show you how you can tell with the skewer if uh, the dough is done or not. And I am just hoping that this will not crack. So I'm holding my thumbs, at, as we would say in Czech Republic. Half an hour is done, and sadly it did crack, but that's okay. So now I have here a skewer, wooden skewer, and I will poke uh, a hole in it to see if it's done. I'll poke it right through the crack. And since, as you see, it did not come out clean, it still needs a few more minutes. I added three more minutes, so now let's see if this is done. And it's clean, so it's perfect, and now we can turn off the oven. They're out of the oven, and as you see, it did not matter if there was a cross, which was this one, it both cracked, and I just don't know why it keeps cracking, but it's fine, it still will be delicious. Uh, so. It's now time for them to cool off because you cannot cut it before it's completely cooled off otherwise the slices will be all mushy but soon you will be able to cut at least the end and sample it. The whole house smells amazing. It's so wonderful. So I hope you give it a try so you can experience this and don't worry if it cracks. It kind of looks rustic and I guarantee you it will still be very tasty and the way we like to eat it is with butter. Some people put honey on it, butter and honey. Oh, so good. Uh, so before uh, I can sample it, I want to tell you a little bit of a history so you know why it's traditional Easter bread. Uh, so back in the day, uh, this is, it's going back like into 15th century which is a long time ago. Uh, but back then, uh, the sugar was not uh, popular or not, not yet uh, known as much, so people would be putting in a sweet cream, which would sweeten it. Um, also, it depends how rich family was. If the family was rich, then they would uh, put raisins and almonds in, 
and also they would bake for each family member one. Uh, but if the family didn't have much, then they would make just one and share it in between the whole uh, family, just everybody got a little piece. Uh, this is usually baked uh, Saturday uh, before Easter, uh, Easter Sunday, uh, because this way you can take it. Uh, people usually took it to Catholic Church so the priest could bless it with the holy water and then you eat it. So that would be another traditional thing, uh, which is incredible that all these traditions are kept and uh, still being used. Uh, I'm sure my grandma will take her mazanet and have it blessed at the church. Uh, and then she would share it or she would take the Easter eggs and just hardball eggs and have them blessed from the priest at the Catholic Church and then she would give it to us like every time. So that was something fun to always remember. So this is, uh, this is great tradition so I hope that you will start this tradition if you haven't yet. Uh, it's, uh, it's wonderful and also uh, 40 days before Easter, that's where the, pu uh, the, the, the fasting starts. Pust is the Czech word for it, so that's why I said that. Uh, and people are fasting from meat, but also some would fast from the uh, flour and eggs. So Saturday, two day, uh, the day before Easter Sunday, people would uh, start eating. That would be the first day of the, after the fast. So that's why there will be the feast. They would be baking this mazanets, they will be baking also a cake that looks like a lamb, uh, which I'm sure in the future I will have also recipe before. So this is the history. So I hope you enjoyed it um, to know a little bit about this special Easter bread. Let me try it. I'll bring some butter and I will sample it. I know that this will still be hot, so I will just cut little part here and I know very well how this tastes because I tried it so much. It's incredibly fluffy and the raisins are inside that you can see and now the butter will actually melt because it's still warm so it's already melting as you can see mm. and also mm, so good Right now, it will be crispy. The next day, it will be chewy. So it's great to have it just warm like this. Hmm. The bottom is a little darker, but it's good. Hmm. It's sweet, just all right. It's not over sweeted. The raisins give even more sweetness, which is wonderful. It's just amazing. Mm. Honestly, I'm not tired of it. I have full freezer, eat it every day, <laughs> and I still enjoy it. And I love to peel the almonds when nobody's looking. Or the raisins. Mm. It's so good. I wish you could see how, how fluffy it gets. But you have to try it so you know the flavor. And if you do, I would love to see your photos and let me know how you enjoyed it and I hope that you enjoyed my stories. I don't like to talk about it in the first part of the video because I want to get into the recipe but at the end it's all good, it's all fun, just hanging out with you guys and I really hope that you have an amazing Easter. So happy Easter everyone, <laughs> bye!